I think if we're out, um, you know, the valuation date is June the 24th, which is the date that we get the results. So I imagine most valuers will be downgrading, uh, which will cause a huge sort of uh, period of illiquidity, I think. And, um, you know, what we're hearing from our clients is there's a lot of sales ready to go. Um, but if we're out, I think a lot of those will get put on hold. Um, so, um, you know, if we stay in, then I do really do believe there is a lot of pent-up demand and there will be a surge of product coming to the market and a surge of investment activity. Um, but if we're out, I, I, I feel until everyone has certainty, there will be a large period of illiquidity. Yeah, I think if, if we're out, um, I agree with Richard. I think the valuation community who are talking to each other, um, you know, have got a value on sentiment, which is pretty damn difficult. Um, and the last time that happened was sort of, you know, the back end of 08, early 09, when people in this room will remember, you know, basically over two quarters, you know, pricing in central London fell 40%. Um, so... They, they, everybody's going to be pretty... I mean, I don't think that'll happen this time. Hopefully, it'll be a bump in the road. It won't be a, over the cliff. Um, but you never know. Interesting. Um, I think for, if we're out and what does it mean for Europe, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of with what Alexander was saying. I think people will be then thinking which European countries, you know, would, what would Spain do? What would the Netherlands do? I don't, it's, it's fascinating. Um, so I think, again, uncertainty. Markets do not like uncertainty. So... A Brexit vote will provide uncertainty for both the UK and the Eurozone, and that will mean people will be thinking and maybe not doing. I remember being out in the market 2009 working for a private equity firm, and yes, there was a massive bump, but there was very little transaction. So that's obviously not good for transactional businesses. Richard and I will agree on that one. Um, but also, we all should remember that it was then a remarkable quick turnaround. If you look at what happened between the beginning of 2009 and the end of 2009, market liquidity had sprung right back. Um, pricing became much more settled. Uh, yes, we had a, a big dislocation, but um, I think one should never underestimate um, the resilience of the English economy and also the resilience of the local mindset. You know. There is an on-off mentality, not so much as a we can price it mentality, and that'll help the UK market um, quite a bit. But I was going to say that the, the big difference, though, is that you've got you know after a an out vote, you've got two years at least of uncertainty, which affects the occupier market more than it does the capital market. So you've got two years of wondering whether big banks are going to continue to employ as many people as they have been in, in, in the southeast, etc. So you, you've got a long period of uncertainty which you didn't have um, after the last crisis. I think we'll have different views here because um, if you see how much they're offshoring already, how many people are sent to Birmingham, um, will the passport regime really come under pressure? I think what we all need to understand, the French and the, excuse the, any French people in the, off, uh, in the audience, and the Belgians will be terribly cheesed off that their pet project has been peed on by the English. So that will be really um, something that uh, is not going to go down very well. The rest of Europe will be pragmatic because um, silently, if you talk to everyone, um, many Germans and many Dutch will straight away very clearly tell you, the Brits, they have a point. We don't like how this is going. So I think it will be more conciliatory, hopefully, um, than, uh, than we all think. And my trust is always that it is all run by Eurocrats who um, don't necessarily want to exert themselves excessively, so there'll be a lot of copy and paste and keep the status if we don't have to fight it. But that's my opinion. I mean, I think the, uh, you know, if you look at the tenant base, as we know, the West End and Midtown and now elements of the city have definitely been driven by TMT. And I think, interestingly, the TMT, I was involved in the Facebook letting um, at Rathbone Place. And, you know, Brexit, interestingly, didn't even really, you know, come, come up. I mean, honestly, because why are, the, why are these guys, you know, leasing huge amounts of space in London? Because of everything we know, you know, law, time zone, access to really good workers, you know, all the stuff we know about. I think the city, on the other hand, you know, very interesting what Jamie Dimon of JP Morgan said, you know, 1,000 to 4,000 workers would immediately go overseas. Obviously, the press went straight to the 4,000 
but you know, Goldman are thinking about it, Morgan Stanley are thinking about it, Bamel are thinking about it. So, you know, I think that will, de if we leave, definitely, definitely the city is going to have an impact on banks, insurance, maybe not. And then does banks feed through to lawyers and then lawyers to accountants and, you know, <laughs> it goes on. Um, but I think very interestingly, that, that, that whole tenant base in the West End, and even though it's private equity, hedge funds, TMT, corporate occupiers, guys like Colliers, um, they're not so focused on Brexit. 